An old man found alien eggs on the shore and took them home, but what started to hatch from them shocked him. One night some fishermen witness a meteorite falling into the sea and report it to the Coast Guard. Moments later, an unknown creature attacks the men one by one, pulling them under the water with its tentacles. A new day comes, and a local law enforcement officer named Kieran O'Shea wakes up with a severe hangover. Meanwhile, a young police officer named Lisa Nolan arrives on the Irish island of Erin, happily anticipating her new job. She is met on the pier by the shabby Kieran, who is annoyed by his new colleague's enthusiasm. At the police station, it turns out that the girl has come to replace an officer who is going on a two-week vacation. Meanwhile, a series of unusual events take place on a quiet island. A fisherman catches an unknown creature that spits viscous slime. A local resident notices that the shore is littered with the carcasses of mutilated dolphins and reports it to the authorities. Kieran and Lisa get acquainted and gradually develop a friendly rapport. It turns out that Officer Nolan has arrived from Dublin, where she deals with the worst criminals. The cops go to the beach together to investigate what happened. Adam Smith, a marine biologist, tells the officers that all the dolphins have parted with their lives while at sea, which he finds rather strange. The guards do not pay much attention to this and call for help from some construction workers to remove the dolphin carcasses from the shore. When the cleanup is complete, one of the workers moves away from the crew to retrieve the abandoned shovels. He is surprised to find several large eggs in the sand. The man tries to get a better look at his find, but at the same moment something attacks him. <laughs> Tired of waiting for the worker, foreman Declan Cooney goes to the beach to get him, but finds no one there. In the evening, Kieran goes back to the bar to get drunk. Meanwhile, the news reports about the fisherman who mysteriously disappeared at sea the previous night. Lisa checks into the room above the establishment and smiles at the sight of her partner. Noticing this, the bartender's wife tells Kieran that the girl clearly has a liking for him, and he needs to act. But the unsociable officer sets his priorities straight and chooses to communicate with the oddball fisherman Patty. He tells O'Shea about his incredible find. I caught myself a sea monster today. Swear to God, may he strike me down. However, Kieran is not drunk enough to believe what he says, so he just leaves. In one of the cottages on the island, a married couple is getting ready for bed when suddenly they hear a knock on the door. The husband goes out to look through the peephole for an intruder, and sees Brigadier Cooney, who looks tipsy. The couple open the door and find their guest seemingly floating in the air. What does he want? To dance? The landlord runs up to the falling foreman, but at the same second a huge tentacle penetrates his body and drags him away to an unknown destination. The shocked woman runs back into the house while her husband's desperate screams are heard from somewhere above. Suddenly everything goes silent, and something falls down the fireplace. The woman immediately runs up there, hoping to get her husband out of there. But the unknown monster grabs her and drags her up, only leaving her two pink slippers. During this time, Kieran gets pretty drunk and gathers up the courage to visit Lisa. He offers the girl to have a drink together, but the young officer is taking on her job duties responsibly and refuses to drink before work. O'Shea assures the girl that nothing ever happens on the island and leaves behind some clumsy attempts to flirt with his colleague. Lisa doesn't respond to them in any way, and Kieran, overcome by the alcohol he has drunk, falls asleep. Patty the fisherman returns home after the bar and checks his sea monster in the bathroom. He is surprised to find that the creature has laid an egg and burst out of its cage. The man finds residual viscous liquid on the mirror and is disgusted to find the creature on his ceiling. The blue monster, which looks like an enormous squid, jabs its tentacle into the fisherman's neck. A brief fight ensues between the two, in which the drunken Patty triumphs. A new day dawns on the picturesque island of Aaron. Lisa wakes up and makes friendly conversation with the bartender's wife about the impending storm. The woman seizes the moment to put in a good word for Kieran and tells her that he is a widower. She suggests that Lisa get to know him better and promises to arrange for them a room together, but the officer is clearly not ready to let the man near her so quickly. It turns out that last night Nolan took her drunken partner to a holding cell so he could recover. After the incident, Patty summons the officers and a marine ecologist to his house to examine the fallen monster. The fisherman gives his find the name Grabbers, anticipating making a huge fortune from it. After conducting several investigations, Dr. Smith concludes that they have an alien creature in front of them. The monster has a long stinger in its mouth, with which it pokes its victims and sucks the red liquid out of them. The ecologist determines that, away from the water, the creature poses no danger. He also tells those present that it is a female and shows them the egg it laid. She was pregnant. <laughs> on the way back, Kieran notices Cooney's car abandoned on the beach. He looks around the shore and calls out to the man, but no one responds. Trusting their professional instincts, the cops decide to look into a cabin nearby. Peeking through the windows, she finds that the lights inside are on, even though it's daytime. 
Lisa notices the remains of a man's shirt on the roof and decides to climb up. She tries to pull the pieces of cloth out of the chimney, but along with them she recovers a severed human head. It falls right on top of Kieran, preventing him from taking a sip of alcohol. The officers take the head to the village doctor, who has never encountered such a case. He guesses at random that the victim was attacked by some huge beast like a tiger. Suddenly, Patty bursts into the doctor's office and reports that his house has been attacked by a monster. The alien creature made a hole in the wall of the fisherman's dwelling and blew out the tub. Kieran pieces together all the strange events that have occurred on the island in recent days and determines that there is another monster. He speculates that it must be a male who has come to the island with the female to breed. It must be much larger and more dangerous than its mate, since it was able to tear apart the house. It rained the previous night, which allowed the monster to move freely on land, dining on the locals. Kieran suggests that during dry weather the creature is hiding in a place that is close to the water. Patty says he has found the female not far from the black cave, and the trio head there to investigate. Inside the gorge, the officers discover what is left of the fisherman. In the meantime, Patty finds more laid eggs outside. Kieran can't think of anything else to do than to call out to the male. Hello! We expect him. Hello, it's only me. The monster turns out to be much bigger, so the trio has to flee. Lisa tries to call for reinforcements to the island, but, due to the impending storm, help will not arrive until morning. By then, Dr. Smith discovers that the dolphin carcasses are supposed to be the newborn monster's first meal. The frightened O'Shea decides to burn the female alien squid, fearing that the second monster will come for her. However, a fire in the lab sets off the fire alarm and gives the monster the moisture it needs. Quickly assessing the situation, Patty rushes out. Dr. Smith and the officers arm themselves with improvised means, waiting for the monster to attack. The next moment, the female comes to life and clings to Kieran's face, beginning to suck the red liquid out of him. Lisa and Adam manage to knock the creature off the officer, at which point it begins to spit back the fluid it sucked out. The trio surrounds the monster on all sides and viciously maul it. There goes the scientific discovery of our time. Still moving. With the monster already defeated, Patty walks back in as if nothing had happened. The officers wonder how he managed to survive last night's encounter with the alien creature. Kieran recalls that the fisherman was very drunk and concludes that the monster cannot absorb alcohol. So the heroes come up with a desperate plan for survival. They need to survive on the island until the morning evacuation, and the only reliable way to save themselves is to take a high dose of alcohol. The boys get the bar owner to invite everyone in town to his establishment for the night, where they can shelter from the storm and get drunk on free liquor. But among the drunks, there must remain one sober man who will be in control of the situation. Oddly enough, Kieran volunteers for this mission. Lisa is wary of this venture, but O'Shea convinces her to relax and trust him. The company decides to get the girl drunk, which leads to hilarious consequences. Later, Lisa's biomaterial is taken for analysis and given to the sea monster to drink. What for locals is considered a daily dose of alcohol, for the alien turns out to be destructive. After determining the amount of alcohol required to destroy the monster, the team proceeds to execute the plan. The cops come to the church and invite everyone to a party at the tavern. Music and company and the crack! And a free bar. Oh, come on, it's a party and the drinks are on us! The party is in full swing. The customers are drinking alcohol and carefree dancing. Meanwhile, in the back room, a team of conspirators is gathering equipment for a battle with the giant squid. The cops look out for the monster from their patrol car. Rather drunk, Lisa tries to flirt with Kieran, but he says it's not the right time. Nevertheless, the couple begins to bond as much as possible, talking about the hardships of their lives. O'Shea admits that his wife is actually alive, they just haven't really clicked. Since then, the man has been chugging his sadness away in alcohol. Meanwhile, one of the bar patrons goes outside to relieve himself. In the pouring rain, little monsters begin to hatch from the eggs, surrounding the bar on all sides. The man is their first victim, but the police come to his rescue in time. But the happiness from the rescue does not last long. The male sea monster appears on top of the bar. He reaches out with his tentacle to the hapless customer and quickly dispatches him. So, it turns out that the locals are getting drunk for absolutely nothing. The monster can simply rip the head off its victims and the alcohol will be no obstacle. The cops, terrified, get back in their car and turn on the siren to distract the creature for a while. The owner runs out of the tavern and helps his friends get back inside. Now the totally drunk team has to fight the huge monster, but they can barely stand on their feet. Meanwhile, the bar runs out of alcohol and the customers start to complain and fight amongst themselves. The sober Kieran can't control the situation and fails to stop Dr. Smith, who goes outside to take pictures of the monster.
O'Shea returns to the bar and tells the townspeople to go up to the top floor and stay away from the windows. In the meantime, the newborn monsters sneak in looking for their snack. The gathered people decide how to proceed and offer the most ridiculous options possible. A little sobered up by what's going on, Lisa suggests taking a forklift from Cooney's construction site to fight the sea monster. You could grab it, and you could just lift it up, and you could just hoist it up and leave it there. However, it would take a volunteer with the highest level of alcohol inside to get past the little monsters down there safely. That's obviously Officer Nolan, who started getting drunk before anyone else at the bar. But the girl is so drunk that she falls down the stairs before the mission even begins. Patty then suggests creating a camouflage for Officer O'Shea by coating him with female slime. That way the policeman can get to his car safely while the sea monster is distracted by his counterpart. The locals support the idea and begin to assemble camouflage for Kieran from improvised means. In the meantime, Lisa comes to her senses and disposes of the baby monsters with a construction stapler. Noticing a bottle of alcohol and a lighter on the kitchen floor, she gets the idea to set the alien creatures on fire. At that moment, however, the enraged male bursts into the building and attacks the girl. Trying to get away from him, the girl drops her lighter and accidentally starts a fire in the bar. Eventually Lisa manages to free herself from the monster's tentacles and runs outside. Smelling the female, the monster switches its attention to Kieran's scarecrow and attacks the top floor of the bar. Officer Nolan pulls up under the bar's windows and her partner jumps into her pickup truck. They drive at full speed into the construction site and the monster goes after them in pursuit. Meanwhile, the downpour stops. Kieran decides to divert the alien creature's attention to himself to lure him into a ravine filled with barrels of fuel. However, the monster proves to be too cunning and does not fall into the trap but attacks the policeman with its sting. The man is getting ready to say goodbye to life, but at the very last moment the drunken Lisa crushes the monster with a forklift. The happy partners reunite, but the monster grabs Kieran one last time with its tentacles. The policeman pours an entire bottle of alcohol into its mouth, making the alien creature very sick. Grabbing the gun from her colleague, Lisa aims it at the fuel barrels. Ah, oh, such a hole! The survivors of the horror night greet a new dawn. Lisa and Kieran stop resisting their feelings and join together in a long-awaited kiss. At the end of the story, we notice that there are still many alien creature eggs left on the beach. Would you bring an egg of unknown origin to your home? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until we meet again.